This is how Rhodesian Ridgebacks play. Brawling and crashing and crashing and did I mention crashing? So it's no surprise people worry about having Rhodesian Ridgebacks and kids together. And those worries are a good sign because it means you're being thoughtful about keeping everyone happy and healthy. As someone who recently brought home another new baby, I'm often asked about how I integrate my big dogs with little kids. There are a ton of great training resources available on the subject, but the single most helpful technique for me isn't one I found in any of the places I first looked. Because so much of the books and blogs focus on long lists of specifics you can't always remember, especially when sleep deprived. And they offer an even longer list of all the things you can't let your dog and children do. Theoretically, if executed perfectly, the sum of these lists is a safe, but sterile and high strong home in my opinion. And as any parent will tell you, human or Ridgeback, nothing gets executed perfectly. So for me, the perfect solution to an imperfect life is not teaching my dogs to do something, but teaching them to do nothing. We're used to giving our dogs commands, an input for an output. We say they do. But this type of training isn't particularly helpful when we need our dogs to make the right decisions without specific instruction. And with kids, the right decision is almost always doing nothing. My goal is to ensure my dogs are comfortable around my kids because they understand the boundaries and they know they'll always be rewarded for disengaging. It might not seem like training, but teaching Penny and Zero to simply sit next to Lincoln was an essential first step. They were shocked to get treats for this, but they quickly learned that doing nothing got them rewarded. As Lincoln grew, the challenges of keeping everyone safe did too. In these clips, you can see Lincoln is pretty much doing everything you don't want a kid to do. Invading space, knocking against the dogs, making loud noises. But the dogs have learned to ignore him and focus on me. We further built a positive bond between the dogs and Lincoln by making him a source of treats and meals. It worked wonders to help solidify seeing Link as a source of good feelings. The do nothing training isn't designed for when things go right, but for when they don't. Just like I train my guys against any resource guarding with me, I do so explicitly with my children as well. This isn't me throwing Link into the lions. This is very deliberate practice so that my guys know Lincoln can take and give things at will. If he happens to grab a toy, a bone, or a treat when he shouldn't, we practice for that scenario here in a controlled setting. Rather than a trick or a skill where you know your dog has it down, I like to think of doing nothing training as a larger framework. And when Quinn came along, we built it out even further. With all of our creatures, in fact. The cycle of positive reinforcement began anew, with nothing taken for granted. But I will say I was happily surprised at how much more naturally at ease the dogs were the second time around. Penny especially. These days, she barely even bats an eyelid when there's a tiny human flapping around on her back. What I've come to love about this style of training is that it frees me up to do more dumb stuff without having to direct the dogs to sit or stay or hold any specific command. When they see me engage with the kids, they know all they have to do is ignore the nonsense, no matter how much of it there is, and eventually, I'll come swooping back in with treats. For them, it's a pretty good gig. Now, to be clear, none of this replaces or overrides specific safety directions about keeping kids and dogs safe. But what it does allow me to do is more tightly integrate my family rather than separate it into pieces. Just as they love when I pick up their leashes, so too do my guys love when I pick up the hiking backpack and place Quinn inside. They know that where we go together, we go joyfully. And for all their wild romping, their spatial intelligence is quite exceptional when required. Penny and Zero will crash into me without thought, because I can take it. But I find it pretty incredible how they tiptoe around the baby carrier. 
Again, this isn't done so I can just walk away from Quinn. <laughs> but when dad accidentally gets a bit too far away from baby, I feel more secure knowing we've prepared for my inevitable mistakes. Because those mistakes are really the biggest blind spot most resources fail to discuss. Planning for perfection is planning to fail. I much prefer to plan for multiple points of failure. And we've had plenty of that. Miscommunications, misunderstandings, and worst of all, Grand Theft Elmo. Despite Penny's brazen attempts, fortunately, we've been able to reconcile. Not to mention all the accidental bumps and bruises along the way. But again, these are the kinds of mistakes I can live with. What I can't live with is leaving my dogs and kids unprepared for sharing life together. We live in close quarters. So as our family grows, so too must our preparation. It's work and it's deliberate, but it is also joyful. I love this clip of Quinn and Zero in particular because it shows so much learning, communication, comfort, and love all of which continue to grow each day. I want to make sure I mention that we've built up to this point slowly and cautiously. And again, I have to emphasize the unyielding priority of keeping my children and my dogs safe above all else. But in my mind, there's nothing more dangerous than trying to keep them neatly separated. In this little apartment, it's just not going to work. So in this video, you can see examples of classic instances of things a baby or dog might not be allowed to do, but things that really happen all the time. That's why this supervised give and take is invaluable for both of them. It's an imperfect thing, of course, but what isn't? My dogs and my children having each other is easily one of the best parts of all of our lives. And despite the challenges, I couldn't dream of keeping them apart. Every day around here is a grand adventure, even if we don't make it past the living room floor. There's so much for us all to share, both figuratively and literally. But thanks to the work we put in, all my creatures understand that we're on the same team even if we're not always on the same page. <laughs> and any missteps should be handled graciously. And patience? Well, patience should always be rewarded copiously. We all learn through experience. By making that experience a shared one, my children, my dogs, and I learn and grow together. Not in parallel, but in unison. And that unity means the world to me. As it does for Quinn, this journey fills me with joy and love. If it comes at the cost of a couple of bumps on our heads, so be it. I encourage you to read as much as you can about parenting with dogs and babies. Know the specifics understand the best practices, but also be sure to research do nothing training. It's unquestionably the best technique I've discovered. I mean, if I can teach Penny, the demon of destruction, the maestro of mayhem, to be at ease around a baby and ignore their infractions, I've no doubt you can do it too. Because in all likelihood, you're smarter than I am and your dog isn't as crazy as Penny is. How you bring your kids and dogs together won't look exactly how anyone else does it, and that's okay. 
you're willing to put in the effort to make it work, you'll make it work. Just make sure to stock up on treats, of course. Nobody works for free.